Hello, it's Joey, and today I have 10 ideas for junk journal pages, which I'll share and I'll also make some. They are pre made journal pages using just a simple book page as a base, like this. And each of these has a different design, like this page with a belly band here, like this page with a tuck spot just here, or like this page here with a pocket at the bottom. When you come to make a journal and you maybe get a little bit stuck at filling a page, you already have something to add. So I used them in my Junk Journal July journal, so this chubby little baby. And Junk Journal July, like Junk Journal January, is a challenge that runs for a month over on Instagram. And we create and post a page every day. And it's one of those challenges where I love to stay involved, but maybe I can't keep up. So I added a page at the end, and maybe one or two in here, and it was just something that allowed me to speed up my creative process. So these are fantastic pages if you maybe feel like you want to go a bit faster, but you also love collage and using scraps. What I really want you to get out of today is not a prescriptive process for making these pre-made junk journal pages, but rather something that works to really enable your own style and definitely use your own scraps. So I have some process steps here, as usual on my channel, to make life really easy. And I also have 10 junk journal page ideas on this sheet. So I'll talk these through and explain each of these and then we'll, we'll make two or three. I'll start today by talking you through each of the different designs. So each of the 10 design ideas that I have listed on the sheet. And I'll do them in the order that they're listed here so that it's really easy for you to come back to this video at a later stage and maybe find the design that you want to make and find the example that I'll show you. The pages would be used in a journal something like this. So this is one I made as part of the recent Fast Flow Stitching collaboration. And I would just take a page, maybe one like this, that hasn't got a lot of images already on it that I want to preserve, I'd take one of my pre-made pages and literally glue that on. So this would give me somewhere to put some ephemera straight away, it speeds up the process a lot, and I just get really excited when I've got something to bounce off straight away, and I've really got something that catalyzes my process, but is still very much in my own style and using my own supplies. Speaking of which, in a minute I will do a little walk around of all the different supplies that I'm going to use today that are sitting on my desk. So let's just take each of these and I'll describe them and maybe you can choose which ones you would like to create. This is the pocket across the page at the bottom using hand-torn papers. So I just happened to print on some and I've made this one into a pocket and then I've decorated with extra bits of collage and washi so lovely ink here and there's a bit of mica and I've added some extra images. So I've collaged behind so it looks like continuity behind the pocket in there and this is another example so on this one I added some stamping and some painting and this is a really super rip of paper so certainly not a straight cut nice pocket at the bottom and collage at the top. Number two is a pocket in a corner with space to add ephemera, so a little bit of a variation. So again, ripping paper, putting that on, collage behind and some extra collage on the front here. This is actually a little bit tactile, so I've got some... I had some sticky felt here and I love the sheer black and the contrast and some beautiful washi down here. So here is a number three horizontal belly band with extra matting elements behind. I'll go quite quickly because I do have ten and then I'm going to make two or three. And on this one I added some packing paper but I have drawn and painted behind as well and we'll do a little bit of that today too. This is a belly band that's been sewn on and then I've just added some extra collage and a beautiful image with complementary blue 
in the Kingfisher down here because the paper was the first thing I started with in my layering process. I've got some stamping over some a little label here and another label with blue on. So a vertical belly band number four on the left or the right with collage behind or on it. So I tend to stick to the third at the left or the third at the right. I really liked the text on this. I've got a flag, a little banner at the top. We've got some metallics coming through in the painting and the collage is attached to the belly band as opposed to on the page behind. And this is another vertical belly band, the little bit of material down here. This time I have painted behind and added a bit of collage. So a multi-layered, number five, a multi-layer collage mat with texture or painted papers. So on here there is nothing to lift, it's just a mat. So it's just a mat of different collaged papers and I have then drawn a different style of foliage on it and painted that in both my watercolour paints and some metallic paints which I'll show you. Let's move on to number six, tuck spots, corner or side. So not so much a pocket at the bottom but a lovely torn image, a little bit of a space here to tuck in. I do like that chap. Plenty of collage behind that comes underneath this little tuck spot so you've got that sense of continuity and I've obviously stamped and I even love I love that too and this one is a tuck spot with a gorgeous image and I took some pencils and I drew around they were watercolour pencils and then I took some water and made the brown and the yellow ochre just blend so the brown is very much featured in the mushroom here and another example where I've got some rather tropical leaves a little bit of gold paper at the top and I've added some autumnal leaves at the bottom. This set of two leaves, if I can just show you there, has got a masking technique which I'll show you when I work the examples up. So just a new little technique I've started to bring into my crafting so that you get one that looks like it's tucked behind the other. It's really easy to do um, but it just adds that sense of depth and it's a bit of fun. So that is a tuck spot. And then I've got number seven, horizontal flaps with decoration and collage behind. So just something kind of a flap, not quite the same as a tuck spot, but you could put something behind it. And you could write behind there or add something extra when you come to add it to your page. There's another horizontal flap I've got. Actually, this is the paper from 49 Dragonflies on my desk. And it was this very morning that my video went live for that. So... I thought I would add that scrap as a flip out there. Number eight, vertical side tucks at the edge of the page. So not a belly band, but one that is attached all the way around here. So this is an example of one of those. So space to tuck things in. And I've collaged on the left and made sure the collage goes underneath where the edge of this piece of paper is that's on the right hand side and then because I don't like straight lines too much I've added a bit of collage on the top make that a jagged edge and I've done some hand drawing of a little bit of foliage here to fill in this space and that's covered with watercolour paint and some metallic paint a flip up number nine a flip up and a journaling spot so on this one I had a piece of paper that I folded at the top and just glued on the back so that that flips up. I've added some cheeky little elements so there's still something interesting to see. Some text on a label and there's plenty of space to write on this one so if that's what you like then this is a good design and something a little bit similar just with a piece of paper folded at the top. I've added something extra underneath, some extra collage and some washi. And lastly, a banner and perhaps a journaling spot and some collage across the page. So examples with banners, just a little piece of paper I had. So I stuck that down and I've also been writing on scrapbook paper with my fountain pen. Just some of the things that you see on different designs, any ideas. There's a lot that's focused around accounting and cash only please or payment received. So I just 
did it myself and tore a little bit off that scrapbook paper and then these are just a few extras at the end of mats with washi and some of the really enjoyable painting that I'll show you later today. So these are the pages. What I would like to do is take my supplies and work across the creation of a few of these in layers. But first let me show you what's laid out on my desk so you can see all the goodness and the things that we're going to enjoy playing with. So to make our pre-made junk journal pages, the first thing we need to do is gather the book pages that work for you and lay out your supplies. And just have a few tips for the choice of book page. The first thing to think about is, is really the size of page. So I've chosen today a relatively small page and I'm really thinking about adding to a journal like this. So inside here, this would allow me to, let's pick a small page, allow me to just add onto any of these, even if the page isn't that big, it can overlap. So I'm going to choose a smallish page, think about what size page you want, but also think about, I would suggest, the colour of the page. So I really think it adds something when you've got this gorgeous yellowing from a book page and probably as well think about pages that are a little bit thicker, so not the absolute thinnest and I like to have quite a matte page so I don't really think glossy works for this because it's harder to stick things and it's harder to do some of the painting and the stamping that we might want to do on it. So gather your book pages and then lay out your supplies and it might take a little bit of time to get all of these things together but once you've got them on your desk you've just got an abundance of fun ahead of you. So on my desk today, working from a right to left, I have that fast flow stitching journal and then I have a little selection of stamps. So I've got a small leaf stamp and a larger stamp and also my postmark stamps, a pot there with the various stamps in it. So you can see Hobby Art Limited is my leaf stamp du jour at the moment. I've got some ink pads and moving to the left behind my refilled tub of bottle of glue there I have some washi tape and I've got some new ones to play with today so as well as the little very dainty washi tape I have in black and white with my little gate post bits of fern I've got a new box there in green those look really lovely to play with on the pages today. A pot of black and white which I like to have separate so I can dip into something that's quite dramatic. Some water for my paint, a little journal that I've been testing my page size out on and some painting of leaves I've done behind. My Arteza dual coloured metallic paints which I add to those leaves that I paint. And then over to the left probably the key elements I've been getting a little bit sorted, there's my tearing ruler and I've got a tub of focal points by way of butterflies and then I have small scraps of coloured papers. So starting to get a little bit more of a system going which I find really helps. I've got some insects here which featured in my November glue book page, that's a monthly challenge. So they are great for decorating journal pages. I've got some Victoria Designs botanicals at the back, some labels here, extra labels, and then really the, the meat of it comes from some of those. Can you see some wallets with lots of pages in? And those are divided into book pages and collage pages in the main, and I'll show you those. So these are the supplies that I'm going to be using to make two or three pre-made journal pages but it's the layering and the process and the approach which I hope works for you, is flexible to your supplies and your style and allows us to have a ton of fun. So this is the very full wallet of collage papers that I'm using today and what I did was have a massive tidy up in my craft room and anything that was of that natural greens and neutral colours, maybe with a flash of red and green, I put in here. And I've just got the most eclectic mix, which is how I like to play. That is the piece of paper where I said I was just writing on it and then I splattered it and stamped on it. So I'm using those as my own little labels. So what I've done is tear out, well pull out, a 
few of the sheets that I might start to make the first component in each of these journal pages and I said this was about layering so what I'm going to do is just literally pick two or three of these create the fundamental structure like a tuck spot or a belly band and then go for the collage and the colouring and the detail which is what I think I might have written down in my process steps I'll tear out some book pages, we've gathered our supplies, we're going to make the base of each page. So we're going to start with the key features and make the most of the particular piece of paper that you've got. And this is where it's, it's oh so flexible. So this is about making the most of what you've got and just doing what you feel like. So why don't I start with two or three pages from a small book. Just pull them out. It's, it's a pale vanilla colour, colour this not deeply yellow but it's the size I like and I think I'll be able to paint on this as well so that works for me for having a go and I'm going to choose whatever works for, for me from these I'll look at the features on the page and then I'll work with it I really like the bold here so I'm going to go for something that makes the most of those I don't want to cut through text when I tear and I think I will maybe tear it along that line too so let's tear one off I do find it easier to do larger pages but the slightly smaller journal pages are the ones that I find most useful in my junk journal because I can always make them bigger but it's not so easy to tear them down once you've made them so I've got maybe something to do with that let's see what else we have in this pile gorgeousness and colours oh, I've got some beautiful vintage papers here from an old magazine I might use that for collage behind might do something with this, this is printed on I think I printed it on 160 GSM which really helps when you've got fantastic images to get vibrance and clarity and that's what I really want. So what, maybe I can do something with this piece, turn that into some kind of side tuck. So maybe that's an upright belly band and let's see what this might turn into. So I'm looking at the image and thinking that's what I want to tear a piece off around. We'll do something with that. So you see it's very organic this. You've got to go with what you've got, make the most of it. And what else do we have? I love these mushrooms. I made a side flap with that on another page. Really beautiful, aren't they? I can get lost in looking at these. I think I might do a pocket at the bottom. I've got something maybe here, so I think what I will do is tear a piece off with that. Ooh, I like this here as well. But that's going to come up too high on my piece of paper and I can, I can cut this down and do something with it. I really like this. I'm going to work with this. Let's see how wide my page is. Plenty plenty. So I'll just fold that over. So it looks like what we're going to be making is a page with a pocket at the bottom, some kind of upright belly band and a tuck spot at the side. So I think what I'll do is just tidy up my desk a bit and put these three items in front of me. So do I want to keep this at the bottom? I think I'm going to go for that, tear off at the top. I'm going to take it, I want a rough edge that's good. Approximations are fine, in fact, within the page is good. I'll just stick that on. Let's go for some glue. Maybe bring that back. I don't like that. I don't like that pointiness. I just want to round it a bit. And then I will glue it on the side. nice dry glue will help when your pages are a little bit thinner. 
Do I want to go to the bottom? I'd just go to about there, I think. So main structure, number one. Let's try number two. Let's try the pocket. And that can go on. And these are just so ridiculously easy that you'll find you get very absorbed in the making and you kind of kind of pick up speed. So I think I'll just tear off a bit. It doesn't matter if it overlaps actually and maybe that's nice. Take that down. My extremely old ruler that I inherited from my dad. I found it's actually got my granddad's name carved in it. How about that? Isn't it lovely when you can use really personal items in your crafting? That can go on. I'll just go around the edge again. But what I am going to do before I put it down, I don't like the regularity across here. I'm going to give that a bit more ratty tattiness. That's a bit better. So much better. Stick that on. Got a bit of glue on the desk here. It's fine. Pocket and something with this text. So do I want to let it extend? Do I want it to be trimmed at the top and bottom? I think what I'm going to do with this one is glue it on at the top here and at the bottom. Out there. Guesstimation. And then I will trim off a bit because it's just a bit too long, but I'm going to preserve all of the text. It just seems to work. So that's on there. I'll have a bit of glue down here. And then I will find my scissors and just trim off at the top and bottom. I don't mind these being straight with scissors. So how quick was that? We've got the basic structure done and the rest is really home straight. So the next thing I'm going to do is embellish each page with extras, extra details, working in those layers. And look, we're already on number four. I'm going to work across all of the pages with extra paper, so collage and labels, and then I'll move on to the next layer. So I've pulled out from a very large basket that I now have some lovely pieces of neutrals. So again, my little systems are starting to get going and they really do help. I'll use some of those and I'm also going to reach into some of my pots of labels that I showed you on my desk and maybe even some of my lovely insects and maybe some colour. So maybe some colour from one or two of these other pots. So with all of these it's really free form. I think I will add layers behind the items and and then we might move to labels on top. So let's just start. Less faffing, Joey. Let's not faff today. Do you sometimes feel like you're faffing? Is that a technical term? Is it even a real word? Let me know if you feel like you have a tendency to faff. Let's all vote and confess if we faff, because I definitely do. And I feel like I was faffing then. There we go, book page. We're no longer faffing. Okay, I've got a little gorgeous piece that contrasts. You can see I've moved on to my liquid glue and maybe you can feel the energy. We are flowing. We're up and running. We're collaging. I have to say the system of having neutrals, colours and images around me is a game changer. It's a term I used in my video when I was talking about the various tools that I have, my 10 best tools. I'll link that in the description box down below. And I said my sewing machine was a game changer, but having a system for your paper is a game changer that I should have introduced a lot earlier. It's just that it has a life of its own, doesn't it? Paper. First of all, it breeds. This is just, this is my splat paper. For, so when I play in my box with lovely paints, and sometimes not, when I just feel like having a play, I just splat a bit of paint around, especially green, which is on there. And maybe 
a bit good complementary colour. So now we've got our main features, we don't have to think about what we're constructing, we can just go with the flow and add some extras and they're flying on the floor as well. I told you it, it kind of kind of just gets a life of its own my desk once we've got that main piece and I just love that you took a piece behind and it's got gold splatters on and it just resonates with the designs this is Victoria Designs and it just is is something that I wouldn't create if I was just doing it as a single page there's something psychological now that is too similar to the colour here I like it and I want to incorporate it so I think I need to find a page that contrasts so you can see how it just builds up the neutrals are brilliant by the way for adding so they go with so many things and the system is start with your main component your main design make the most of that paper and then when you've got that structure then move on to the collage and labels and I do think labels are a great part of this so I think that might go that might go on there behind to give a little bit of contrast to what we've got I'll have the dots running vertically I think it's fun as well to work across three at one time what do you think? do you think this is going to work for you? that is a great piece, it has a straight line and I think it would be good for breaking up using that jagged edge to break up another line here so I'm going to add that to the vertical belly band itself rather than as a collage piece behind I think it's super fun this approach keep as much of that spotty as I can it just extends the vertical belly band so I'm still going to go under there how are we doing? I love the green paint there's a little bit of coloured snuck into my neutrals that's got very pointy edges I don't think I can cope with much of that which is interesting I think I'll have a bit on top maybe dry glue and let yourself make mistakes because I actually think if you have an approach which is mistakes are fine they probably won't be. It's the way it works. I can see quite a lot of space here and I'm not worried because as we move through the layers we will add further detail and deal with anything that looks like its capacity that we don't want to see. It's got some bold text on this. I do like that. It's a great way using up our book pages and these sheets could have been any of those ten designs that is very similar isn't it it's not really shouting that would be better on here and fortuitously I remembered to only put my glue in the middle and not at the sides and it isn't gladioli but I don't mind that's good I like the text next to the greenery it's building out so the fundamentals are there, I think they're coming together. Should we have just a little bit more behind here? Maybe this one could also have, what have we got in here? I've got a little few scraps of ephemera paper, French ephemera. I think that can tuck behind too, so tuck behind our little pocket. Put that on, that's beautiful paper. So text, great contrast, I think I want that underneath and I still have, yeah, I can tuck that behind and I think maybe something just above here just to build that out, not a book page I need some colour, let's go into the colour pot those are quite teal aren't they let's try another colour pot painty papers, like that it's in the mix of browns, it's a bit big, I think that can go on. In fact as I look at this one with the yellows in it, it's starting to make me think about the green over there, which is fine. I'm going to break up that straight line, a bit of that, it's got 
tiny bit of sort of yellowy paint on, some sort of watercolour and then maybe something up here but I can do that with labels. Maybe it's time for this stage to move on to my labels. So we'll do a bit of swap out of the pots and bring in the labels. Right, I've got my labels in a couple of pots. They're not a particularly different set. Maybe slightly different this one and some in here. So I'm going to use these to augment particularly over the junctions. And I want ones that are, I think I want black boundaries or borders and neutral colours in the main. But I might pick out some greens to go with this one. I don't always want things to be upright, so why don't we have something up there? And already I can see the magic of these. It's got some digits on that one, really like it. So easy as well. I think I'll have something down here. Add some weight to the bottom because this is very much up here. And we don't need to even use whole ones. I don't need to repeat too much either. Just like that little scrap, that might add something, bring something to the party. Yeah, it was just lonely on my desk, I needed to add it. So why don't we, let's pick, oh we have some, we have some numbers. I think I like, I like those. Let's pick, let's pick a nice number. And it's in a dark colour. So the black will go really well with anything, any of these three. So that can go on. Which one shall we have it on? Which do you like? Shall we have that at the top here too? And I think we need something over here. We need to build this one out. So this one's got quite a bit of space over here. It's also very neutral, so I wonder if we could pick a colour it's a bit of blue and green, so what can we find to go with that? That's quite controversial, a bit of teal, but teal can marry up with the blue over here. I think that can go over there, but I don't want it on its own. So that will definitely get some extra added to it. I've got a lovely number, that's nice. I think we'll add that down there. And I must remember as well to maintain a little bit of space because I want to add some of those leaves and I will show you the little masking stamp technique that I've been using. So it's building up nicely. I think I'll add a little bit. I want this to join with that. My little joining technique seems to work. So making things come together. So how about... Can we tuck that under there? Yes, we can. If you build it, he will come. I'm going to carry on with another different font on this label. Just bring that down there, so maybe, maybe vertical. I'll to cover it all up. There we go. Just a little trio. So I think we might be there with scraps of paper and labels. So let's see what we are also going to add, some stamping, drawing and painting images and it's time for a bit of masking. I really do think the addition of either hand drawn leaves, so maybe something like this where the clusters of leaves meet on the stalk or another hand drawn design is just alternate the leaves so that they meet the stalk on either side at different places and I've just coloured them in with watercolour paint and on some of them I've used my metallic paint. This one is a slightly different design with more elegant pointy leaves and none of these are difficult, just have a go. But where I want to start today is having a go at a few of these little clusters with my acrylic stamp oak leaf using a mask. So what I need to do to begin with is make a mask which is something that allows me to put it on and double stamp and therefore have two leaves without one stamping on top of the other. So what I do to create a mask, and I'll show you how I do it, to begin with is take a post-it note. You need something with a little bit of sticky on the back and sticky that's repeat usable. So 
take your leaf design or any of your acrylic stamps and just stamp once onto your post-it but make sure that you pick up some of that sticky behind so stamp at the edge picking up as much of that as you can so maybe about there and then it's just a matter of cutting that out and that's what I've done with this so all that was was a stamped image onto a post-it and then when I come to stamp on my page let's just do one or two I'll do my first inking and stamping yeah I've not left a lot of room it's maybe where should we have it let's have a couple up here so I might stamp once take that off and then when I want my little cluster, I don't want them just as a mess, one on top of the other. So I'll take my little piece of post-it note, put it on top, and some of that has got a little bit of sticky from the post-it note. Re-ink my stamp, and then stamp over the top, wherever I like. It can overlap quite a lot. And what I will get, obviously the mask prevents all of this stamp from touching the page and it will look like one of those leaves is actually behind the other. I always feel like it's a bit of magic every time. And that's all ready for me to paint in a second. I think I'll also just do a couple of freehand branches just to bring some of this to life. And I don't mind going over the text and I feel like I've got a lot of direction over here so why don't we why don't we use some of this space? Just go up. Just a nice sort of oval. Bring them together at the stalk. Go behind that label. Like that. Just getting a little bit bigger each time. So I'll have a really big one down there. Oops something like that and they're ready for me to paint. It just look like they're popping out. And then the third thing I like to do is take a really dainty one. So if you've got any really small images, they're great for adding detail. And just, just choose some spots and we're going to paint those too. So that is an example of the addition of leaves. I think all I'll do is get my watercolour paints out and do a tiny bit of painting of each of those. So I've got my Arteza watercolour palette and I'm predominantly going to use the greens and the yellows and the oranges and mix a few of those around and just paint my leaves and then I'll go in with my metallics on top and just really have a bit of fun. And the way that I do it is just have a little bit of a dip and a little bit of a play. I don't get too much water on because it is a book page that we're using and fill in the leaves, nothing difficult. We've done a bit of and drawing with a gel pen. If I get a bit of darker colour on I like to go back and just swipe it down the edge of a leaf and it sort of gives a bit of a 3D effect. I like the yellowness so I keep dipping in those and I quite like there to be a variety of colours because leaves are never perfectly the same colour are they? If the rest of my design had more oranges in and browns I might pick up a bit more brown in my leaves as well and you can ring the changes with the colours and make them feel quite seasonal by dipping into maybe the oranges a bit like that. That doesn't take long. If I had a lot of pages on the go at any one time I would go back with my metallics quite quickly because I want the paint that I first put down to be wet still when I add the metallic because it sort of merges and blends beautifully in it. Very quick here just going over those dainty ones that I added. Very relaxing painting and somehow even more special when we use green. So I've got something there. Why don't I go to the metallics now and we'll just see what that looks like. And I can go in with any of these colours. Maybe a bit of that gorgeous just gold. Just a little bit on top and although it's my book page is obviously letting the paint bleed a bit I don't mind that. It's almost an extra artistic effect. Let's go with it. 
got some gold on top of those. Might go in with the copper just here and mix it around. These are quite good because it doesn't take too long for the the mica and the paint to actually work. It's not one that you need to spray before. Set that aside, pick up another. I added a bit here, unbelievably messy. Might mix my metallic with some green and yellow. That's a nice colour. Yeah, like that. I hope you see the sheer joy. There's my copper. Let's go for that pale yellow gold. And we had a few little weeny branches around down here. I'm just pulling out this colour here. Just dainty leaves in the gold. That's done. And then our stamped and masked one I feel needs to be in certainly more orangey, orangey green. Something a bit more rustic. So I've got a brownie leaf at the front. So he can have a bit of gold, sweep it off like that and to contrast so that I do see that it's sitting behind I'm going to make this one a bit more of a green then I can see where one starts and one ends just like that. Bring in some of that yellow, that's gorgeous, very easy. I've got a cluster of washi tapes beside me, I'll just show you them. And I did use these, I think to pretty great effect, when I put together a pocket a couple of weeks ago, so this was from a junk mail envelope, and I added lots of collage and these elements of washi on top really do add something. So I think I might have a go at something similar on these. So I need maybe some green and I like to split these in two so we get the tatty edge and the idea is again free form add wherever you want and we're going to probably double them up because that helps too if I've got little bits of label I think it helps to add some washi on top so we get that layering effect just like that it starts to really come together I think I'll have a little bit on here. It's a great colour, isn't it? Green, it goes with so many things. And go down there, maybe on my label, just there. So we've got some shots of green in. Picket fence, I think so. This is my stationary pal favourite, if I'm honest. So maybe just sticking up there. I don't like them too wonky, but if they are wonky, there is always a solution, so I think a piece can go on there, Let's build it up, and another piece. So we can even layer our washi, maybe something on here, just tucking under, just a little bit down here, so I'm bringing the eye down, so I've got something at the top left, moving to the bottom right. I've got some beautiful washi with leaves on. Do I need something else on here? Probably not, but I will. Like that. And some of that green. So this has got leaves on. Very tiny, delicate leaves. Just be brave with your washi and go for it. Time for my postmarks. Do it in my gingery brown and try not to go overboard. I like it on the stems. There we go. And I'll go in with my lines. just going to add one last effect with a little bit of splatter and it's using a fine brush and I'm feeling brave so I'm doing it at my desk. I think this really adds that vintage effect going into that black. I have a little bit of that. 
all over. It's such a beautiful impact. Don't need much, maybe even a bit of silver. 10 journal page ideas using basic supplies. If you've enjoyed this video, then check out my video where I share 15 pages in this junk journal using basic supplies. I think you'd really enjoy seeing all of those too, and I hope to see you soon.